So in the last episode, we looked at how we could show that a user is logged in and then fetch people they follow, fetching their IDs first and then making separate requests to the API to fetch their full details. Off camera, I've done a tiny bit of work just to make this look a little bit nicer and a bit more styled, so we have a bit of styling going on here. And in today's episode, we're going to put in place some infrastructure for allowing us to view different HTML based on the route that we're on. At the end of the last episode, we created this view.index function and left ourselves a big to-do saying change this based on the current route. So based on the route that we have that the user is on, we need to show a different view and render a different function at every time. To know what route a user is currently on, we're going to put that data into our model. So let's update our model to know what the current route is. So I'll go into my types and let's find the model and we'll say current route is a route and we're going to need to import root. If you remember, we created a file called routing and I'll expose the root function like so. So now that we have the current root on our model, we need to actually store it in the init. So the init function is where we create our first model. So we grab the past URL here and that's what we need to put onto our model. So we'll say navigation key and we'll say current root and that's gonna equal the parsed URL. So now as the user navigates around our app, we're going to know what the root is. Let's make sure when we're updating the root, we're, we're also updating it in the model as well. So in our on URL request, if it's an external URL, we send the user there. In that case, we don't need to worry about it because the user's been taken off our site, so it doesn't matter what uh, route we have in our model. If it's internal and we get the sign out, we're gonna sign user out, else for now, we don't do anything. But we need to make sure when we sign the user out, we're redirecting them to the index page. We then need to make sure we update our URL too. So in our sign user out here, you can see we're pushing the user to the index page and clearing the token from storage. And you might think that this is a good place to then update our current route. So we could say current route equals index. We don't even have an index route yet, we're about to create one. However, this would mean that you'd have to do this every single time you have a message that updates where the user's URL is. You'll have to remember to update the current route. And this could get quite buggy over time. It'd be very easy to redirect the user somewhere and not update your model with that route. What we also have as a function is on URL change. And Elm will call this when the URL changes. This is a really good place to put logic that you need to run every time the user navigates around your site. So we're going to do the debug trick. So I'll debug.log on URL change URL. Uh, and we'll just return a message. So let's say not. So I'm logged in at the moment. If I hit sign out, you can see we get an on URL change where the path is slash and it's telling us what the URL now is. If I click sign in, so it goes off to our server and takes a minute. You can see that we come back to the site. And notice that we don't get an on URL change here because this is the first time the user's come to the site. So we only get it when we're navigating internally after the user's already arrived at the site. This means it's a perfect place for us to update our routing status in the model every single time we navigate a user around the site. So let's create a new message to do that. So we're going to create a message called, uh, let's say, user navigated or user changed URL. And it's going to take, in fact, let's not call it user change URL, let's call it user change route. And it's going to take the route that the user is now on. So in our main.elm in on URL change, what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, what's it called? Routing.pass URL to root URL. And that's going to generate us a URL. And we're going to pass that into the user change route message. So this means whenever the URL changes, we're going to get one of these user change root messages. So let's find our update function. You can see we're getting an error here because we're not dealing with this state. So we'll say user change root, new root. And for now, let's just do uh, let underscore equals debug.log new root. And we'll just do model command button none. So if I click sign out, you'll see that we get new root not found. And this isn't quite right. We do know and care about the index route, but we haven't defined that in our code yet. So let's go and add that as one of our possible routes. So let's add our new route in here. I'm just going to call it index. And then let's add a parser for it. This is a super easy parser because it's index. And I believe we just want uh, the string slash. I think is going to map correctly, but we can double check that. And if not, we'll look up the parser documents. In fact, thinking about it, that's definitely wrong because slash isn't the string we want. That's one of the separators. So let's go and look at the routing documentation and see how we can parse out just the index root. And looking at the documents for URL parser, I found this top function, a parser that does not consume any path segments. And in the example here, they've got the URL blog followed by a slash. 
then it could be if it's just that route, the overview route, and it's using the top parser there. So if the user navigates a slash blog, they get just overview, else they get a post. So I'm wondering if that's what we need. So I've updated the code here that we're mapping the index route as parser.top. So this should be all we need to now have our application know about the index route. Let's go and do the navigation from sign in to index again and see if it gets set correctly. So I'm signed in at the moment, I'm gonna hit sign out and we do indeed get new root is index. That's exactly what we want. So the final piece of this puzzle is to take the new root and store it on the model. So we'll say model current root equals new root and we don't have any commands, command.none. So now as we navigate around the site, we're going to have the current root in our model and that will update correctly as we send the user between different parts of our application.